while I suppose in the last episodes it was very steam orientated. So today we're here at Alton to chat to the S&T department who are doing some important work to keep those steam engines literally on the rails. Welcome to In The Loop. Hello folks and welcome to the Watercrest Line and now as always it's time for a quick far look around the railway to see what's been happening since the last episode. Up here in the diesel depot, Lions team have been working well, they've given it a clean on the outside and the roof is now on as well. This will be out in the yard on display for our diesel gala next week, the 11th to the 13th of July. We've got some fantastic visitors coming down. As I mentioned, Lion will be in the yard on display and hopefully they'll have it open as well so you can go inside and have a look. And if you did sign it last year, well, you'll be able to see your signature still there in a somewhat um, more cosy engine room now. As always, if you do want to find out more about our diesel gala, then do visit watercrestline.co.uk where you'll be able to book tickets and also find the timetable when it's released as well. All that's left to say is it's going to be a fantastic few days, some wonderful visitors, so make sure you don't miss out. In the last episode, we chatted to Neil from the Yuri Loco Society, so naturally we covered 506 and the works going on. As you can see, the stays are now in. They actually went in a few days ago, and today they're in the process of tooling over or caulking the stays. On the top end, Jose's done a fantastic job painting. You can see they've purposely missed a section a bit further down the boiler barrel because that's where the lift drops will go when this boiler is lifted back into its frames. There's no point cladding and lagging it, painting it beautifully for your lovely paint job to get scratched. So that will happen after the boiler goes in. And as a little cheeky bonus, if you have a look at the front on the smoke box, you can see 506's new number, it's BR number, 30506. Now naturally, if you would like to find out more about why locomotives carried multiple numbers in their lifetimes, then fear not, we have done an episode about that, and I'll put a link in the description below. Now looking at the bottom end of 506, so frames, wheels, motion, works progressing quite nicely. You can see since the last episode, the wheels are now back in after the axe boxes and horn guys have had a bit of fettling work done to them. Conrods are now back on after the bushes have been remetalled, machined and have been remounted. So really making the most of having the boiler out of the frames to do a sort of a, a mid-ticket mini overhaul. Either way, when we do get this one back up and running, it is going to be lovely. Now from one S15 to another, you may notice the roof from 499 has mysteriously disappeared. But fear not, this is all intentional because in a very exciting step, frames here are getting ready be taken out and moved into the workshop at Rockley MPD. The next stage, once that's gone, the tender which we've been following will be going here, flicked around the other way, so they can carry on with the work they're doing. Looking at Weybridge's tender, they're currently doing a lot of work on the braking system underneath. So you can see various parts on the floor goes onto the brake rigging. The main way shaft, that is away being machined, and it goes onto these brackets either side. The ladders have now been put on, and they're starting to be painted. And at the top, the vacuum reservoir cylinders are mounted and they're being plumbed in as well. So work progressing very nicely indeed. Out here on the pit road, we have Canadian Pacific back in steam after having a washout earlier this week. This is where they drain down all the water from the boiler, give it a good wash through, top it back up again. The reason is um, locomotive boilers, a bit like your kettle at home, does have a problem with sort of calcium and lime scale and that sort of stuff. Now there's a few things you can do, you can treat the water, we've got a water treatment plant as well, but you still need to periodically wash it out and get rid of all that rubbish stuff that you don't want in there. So that's what they've done. Now it's also an ideal opportunity, while the locomotive wasn't required in the week, to do a bit of running maintenance to keep this locomotive looking and sounding amazing. And on that line, a few weeks ago the Woking and Guildford group had their annual charter at the railway where they hire a locomotive and coaches have a lovely evening and the highlight is they will do a non-stop run through Ropley. Everyone hops off the locomotive set smack and does a fantastic run all the way through which I think you'll agree looks 
and sounds amazing. happening here at the watercrest line. Now in today's episode we're here at Alton to chat to some of the S&T department. S&T are responsible for all the signalling at the railway, whether it's the signals themselves, the track work or the detection in the track work to be precise, the signal boxes and the points which is what they're working on today. Now understandably when you take a train you go over a set of points you want to make sure they're in the correct position you're not going to fall into the dirt and that's the system they're testing out today. So, without further ado, let's find out a little bit more from one of the team. Okay, I'm Nigel Scrivens. I uh, head up the maintenance team for the mid Hans Railway. Um, today we're doing point gauging, which is uh, gauged every 12 weeks on a 12-week cycle for safety reasons. We use two different gauges, a 3.5 and a 1.5 millimetre gauge, which we insert between the switch and stop rails, and this gauges the mechanical lock and the electrical detection on the point machines. Um, each point machine has to be gauged on the normal and reverse switches uh, and there's a tolerance of uh, two millimetres between when the mechanical lock engages and when it doesn't engage to ensure that the switches remain in tolerance and are not stood open to a, possibly allow a derailment of a train if it wasn't correctly gauged. Throughout the line between Alsford and uh, Alton we have approximately 25 ends of points and these have to have a legal requirement to be tested every 12 weeks to ensure they are compliant with the gauging requirements. This we do on a regular basis and it's recorded so that if uh, there are any issues at any point that uh, we have the documentation to say that the points have been tested and correctly gauged every 12 week period. Two volunteers with me today, Bill and David, and uh, they both have come from backgrounds other than the railway. David was a BT engineer for uh, over 30 years, uh, and then Bill's worked in engineering. Uh, he's also been a bus driver uh, and a professional model maker. So uh, very, very backgrounds, but uh, they both enjoy working on the railway environment and uh, everything else we do, which is quite a varied task list. So there you are goes to show there's a lot happening on the railway to uh, quite literally keep your train on the track. Now as you may notice S&T used the Wickham trolley to get down here today, understandable when you've got 10 miles of railway to cover. We do actually have two here at the Wardcrest line, that one and the green one and we had the green one out earlier today. So what better way to end this episode with some cool and lovely scenic shots. That's it for us this time, folks. So thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Thank you to Nigel for chatting to us and we'll see you next time.